Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to install a fire alarm and connect it to an alarm system. Here is the fire alarm. It's a two-part unit, which is standard. It's got some wires that need to be, it's got some screws here which need to be open and we've got to wire it. And there's the top cover. When there's an alarm, it'll activate and it will send a signal through this wire to your alarm system. I'm now going to demonstrate how to install this and connect it to your alarm system. Right, this is the kitchen, which is the uh, good place to install the fire alarm. And it's actually a smoke detector. So I'm going to find a place in the ceiling. And I'm now going to install this smoke detector fire alarm. Right, I'm going to push the wire through in the ceiling. That's going to the other side, which is at the alarm center. And now I'm just going to strip the wire. This happens to be a six core wire. I only need four cores. So it is uh, live and neutral, or positive and negative. And then the signal wire, which in my case, I'm going to be using blue and white. So very important, this is going to be installed through the ceiling, so it has to go through the unit. It has to go through the unit. So before you wire it up, you must have this through the unit. Right, now we've got to wire these. Now the positive is going to pin 4. There we go. It's much easier to wire this while it is down. Right, pin four. Just be careful on in how you wire it. If you make it too tight, it actually wedges into the wire, and then look at that, it just snaps it. Ideally, stranded cable would actually be better for this. All right now, I'm just wiring the negative. Okay, negative is wired, and now the positive, the signal, which is two and three, one and two, sorry. There we go. And the other one, last one, which is pin two or contact two, and I'll just screw that in there. Right, now it's done. Now what I need to do is screw this into the ceiling. I've got these screws, ceiling screws. Right, now I'm going to align it there and there and we close it. Now I need to power it up and connect it to the alarm system and I'll demonstrate that. Okay, so here is the wire from the smoke detector. Now it needs to have its power connected to the 12 volts of the alarm system or the battery backup which is this unit over here and then because I want this smoke detector to alarm actually alarm my uh, activate an alarm on my alarm system then I need to connect it to my alarm system now I'm using the IDS alarm system so I'm just going to get the wires which are used for the smoke detector and I'm just going to put the other ones back because it's only only need four wires to wire a smoke detector right so I need the positive and the negative so that'll activate the smoke detectors power but when the uh, alarm condition takes place we need the signal wires which is the blue and the white okay so I'm just going to connect the positive and negative so long
Okay, owing to space limitations on my other expanders, I've had to extend that smoke detector wire through to another expander. That just means that that part of my alarm was full. So, I'm now just labeling it. So I've got smoke detector. And these were the, the wire was on the, the white and the blue. And I'll just demonstrate how to, to connect it. The red and the black I've already connected to power. But the signal wire needs to be connected to the open zone. Okay, so I have on the expander board, and you can see this is expander 6 if you're familiar with the IDS system. I have two zones open here, 7 and 8. So you can see how full the system is. So I'm going to put on zone 7 the smoke detector. So what that means is I have to determine if the smoke detector is normally open or normally closed. Now that smoke detector you can set if it's normally open or normally closed. It is currently set in the default position which is normally open. Which means that under normal conditions the relay is open and when it senses that there's smoke and a smoke a fire alarm then it will close the relay. Now most alarm systems can deal with that condition. So it doesn't really matter. Most important is which option have you got? Now in my case, I'm wiring it as though it is normally open. So that means you have to put a 3K3 resistor in parallel with the zone. Not in series. Under normal conditions, if it was a normally closed zone, you would need to put it in series. But because it is a normally open, we cannot leave the, the zone open. So we have to short it with this. Well, not short it. We have to put bridge, actually, a 3K3 resistor across the zone. So that will be uh, 7 and uh, the, the, the center pin. And then the other wire goes to the other side of the resistor. So I'm wiring it now in parallel. Right. So it goes. Right, so that's what it looks like. Smoke detector signal, blue and white, with a 3K3 resistor in parallel. And now I'm going to put that across the zone, and in this case it happens to be zone 63, and I'm just going to wire that in. Okay, let's take a look. Because my system was full on the other expander, I've wired the smoke detector wires through to another box. I've labeled it smoke detector. As you can see, I've now connected it to this is bus 6 because uh, dip switches 2 and 3 are on. So that's 110 and in binary that's 6. So this is expander 6 and there it is. There is the parallel connection with the 3K3 resistor taking the normally open condition. Again, if the smoke detector was a normally closed smoke detector, that resistor would have to be in series. Okay, now we go to the panel and we configure it so that it understands that it is a smoke detector. Then I will demonstrate the testing of it. To configure the zone, I'm just going to get the unit into the installer mode. It is the eighth uh, it's the eighth board, well the sixth expander, remember there are two on board. Right, so I'm going to now tell the alarm that zone 63 is a smoke detector. So I know that's 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63. Now according to the IDS alarm book, it says here fire zone. So it's a 10. So I must put location, I must put 10 into this location. And now I have zone 63, fire alarm, and it's now done. Now I just need to make sure that it's on the correct partition. So I'll just get into the installer mode again. 201. No. 201. Now it's zone 63. I just need to make sure it's on the partition 1, and it's not, so it is now. And let's make it a buzz zone as well.
Right, now it is time to test the smoke detector. Okay, to test the smoke detector, we just want to get some smoke going here. So I'm just lighting some and then I'm blowing it out. And let's see. There's an LED there. And the LED is now activated. Smoke detector is now activated. Alright, so the IDS alarm system has identified a fault and that's the smoke detector okay then once the is activated some alarms require you to actually disengage them to clear the the fault others don't this particular one didn't once the smoke uh, subsided it went back into the safe position but um, I have installed ones where once the fire alarm activates it kind of locks out